Certified Arborist World Champion Tree Climber Mark Chisholm here with another Steel Pro Tip. What we're going to talk about is crane use today. And the reason being is we have a large hazardous oak tree overhanging the power lines with a real bad structural flaw down low. Cranes take that dynamic loading out of the picture and make it safer for arborists like you and me. So as you can see, the natural growth pattern of this tree is towards the wires, which is why there's such a hazard at play here. We're worried that this tree is going to split out, take out the power lines, and then we have a situation where someone could get hurt or worse. The structural problem we're dealing with today is real common, and it's called codominant stems. And as you can see here, like-sized stems growing close to the ground start to grow away from each other, put a lot of pressure on the union, and eventually become a hazard where they want to split away from one another. So choosing the slings you're going to use to rig the pieces really is up to you. There's a lot of ways to do this, and I choose all different kinds depending on what the job uh, entails. My go-to choice for a lot of irregular trees where they're brushy and they're not totally symmetrical, it tends to be these dead-eye slings that are made for crane use. Um, so they have the labels on, which is, is uh, OSHA regulation, but more importantly, they're fully adjustable, meaning you put the hook where you want them and you can tie them any length you want. So it saves a lot of time, whereas sometimes with the round slings, I find myself using two round slings, they don't quite all reach the exact same place. So you're constantly having to take an extra wrap, two wraps, readjust the hook, bring it back down. Here it's a simpler process where you put the hook in place, anchor your straps wherever they need to be, different irregular shapes is good, and then the same thing happens on the ground. They are able to untie them really quick, so it becomes a real efficient operation. If you really like these round slings, which I do, or it's mandatory that you don't use ropes with, with knots to use for your crane work in the region you're at, one way to get around that is use one of these in conjunction with one or two of these. This way you put this at the center of gravity to do most of your lifting and you can ply that way and then use these just for balancers. It's a nice way to get around that. If you're a climber and you want to tie into a crane, you have to know what you're allowed to do based on the region you live in. For me in the US, I looked at ANSI Z133 for the guidelines. So one of the things I recommend for all you climbers out there is if you're going to do crane work, headset communication is key. It takes away a lot of stress and adds another safety level to what you got to do. All right, Pete, good to go. All right, so when we're dealing with a piece that's kind of close to something like the power lines here, we don't want a chance at going tipping one way or the other if we're wrong with our balance point. So in this situation, I have three slings to try to balance both ends and the middle. And lastly, what I'm gonna do is match it with a cut we call the, the shelf cut, which is basically a horizontal cut. And then a top cut, any angle you go is fine with the top cut. It's mainly giving it a support system so that way it could sit there and buy some time so Pete on the crane can actually pull that back up slowly and kind of control it. All right, so for this next cut, what we're going to do is make something I call a ledge cut. I'm going to make a basically a horizontal cut to give it a ledge to sit on, make a top cut that bisects it so there's no fiber, and that should give us some time for us to pick it out nice and smooth. All good, Pete? Stand clear. All right, so the purpose of this cut is we can make the cut, the piece is severed, and if we need to make an adjustment, we have all the time in the world without any movement. That lets us have a lot of time to make adjustments if needed. Take it away, Pete. When we're dealing with the wood weights, we want to be real accurate so we can maximize the strength of the crane based on where it's positioned. So what I'm using here is a diameter tape. So I'll take a measurement about where I'm going to make the cut and see where we come up. We're about 22 inches diameter. I'm going to assume it's the same all the way up, even though the top is a little bit more narrow. And then I can measure the length, put that against the green log weight chart, and come real close to how much this weighs. So when we get to this point and we know what length we got, we can make our cut here, here, or six foot lower based on the numbers we're reaching. 
Whenever you have a cut that's kind of awkward with your work positioning, my rule of thumb is always cut the worst part of the cut first, so you finish on a side where you're most comfortable and you're in the safest position possible, meaning I don't want to be underneath this piece when it comes off, so I'm going to start there and then be on the top side of the far side where I'm comfortable to finish the cut. Number two, we're going to use a sawdust cut here, which is going to allow me to, to use the top side of the bar, jam the sawdust in the cut, keep it from setting on my saw, so we don't have to have the proper pressure on, so it sits there until we're ready to lift it off, yet I can pull my saw off. When you're doing crane work, just remember, you can use a lot of methods to get the same job done. Just be safe. Get creative with your rigging and don't make the same blanket cut for everything. Remember, you're not pruning a tree. So if you have to make an angular cut to suit your needs, do it. Mm -hmm.